Hello, everybody. My name is Victoria Leonardo, and I am with Workforce Solutions Capital Area. I am an outreach specialist. Um, welcome to our webinar series. So today we are going to be working with industries and teachers and people in the city of Austin to talk to you about in-demand careers and career and education pathways. So I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves and let's go. All right, who's going first? You want to start, <laughs> Elena? Sure. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Elena Velasco and I am here in Austin that works for this uh, Texas School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. I'm a career ed teacher that also teaches social and emotional learning and I've been there since September and I'm really loving it. So this is a great opportunity. Thank you all for um, providing this. Bethany? Great. Okay. Hi guys, my name is Bethany Queen. I am with the City of Austin and HRD in the uh, Diversity Initiative Program. I am an intern with Janet Silva. Um, happy to be here sitting in on this interview. Awesome. Hi, um, good afternoon. My name is Janet Silva. I'm with the Human Research Department at the City of Austin. Um, I am the uh, Diversity Recruitment Consultant for the HR Division, and I'm really excited for this partnership with Workforce Solutions and excited for to connect um, students in the classroom to um, our workforce. So really excited to be here today. Yeah, definitely. And Kimberly? Uh, so I'm Kimberly Maddox. I am the Assistant Director for Administration at Austin Public Health. Um, and I guess I'll be telling you more about myself in the questions, so I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> awesome. So Elena will be doing the questions and then Kimberly will be answering. And let's get started. All right, thank you so much. All right, so the first question we have are just the basics. Um, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do for the city of Austin. So I um, I guess my I can give you my educational background. So I have a bachelor's degree in government uh, and a master's degree in public administration. Um, I have been in government since 1996 in the government role. Um, I am currently the Assistant Director for Administration for Austin Public Health, and what that means is that I, all of the units within the department that support all the other services are in my division. So all the support functions, we call them, budget, accounting, okay. human resources, uh, information technology, facilities and maintenance, capital bond projects, um, I'm forgetting so, uh, communications and public information. Um, I know I'm forgetting somebody, but the <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot to remember. <laughs> else they think of later. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> and anything else they can think of that day. Um, so um, so our my division, my staff, um, if we don't do our job, then everybody else can't do their job. So right. um, we're very internally focused for customer service to our other city, um, other department employees. Um, but what we do allows them to do what they do for the community. Oh, awesome. Okay, so you would say your responsibilities are kind of to keep those different departments moving, huh? Moving smoothly? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's a lot. It's never dull. Um, it's always no. something new every sure. day. So. Especially right now, huh? <laughs> yes, especially right now. <laughs> yeah, so what does your day typically look like? Some of those responsibilities. So do you want to know pre-COVID or do you want to know post-COVID? Because they're very Ooh, different. Ooh, right <laughs> that's a good one. You know, just for the present moment, let's go ahead and talk about right now. Okay, so right now um, I am teleworking 100% of the time from my home. Mm -hmm. um, we use Teams almost exclusively, so I'm on Teams pretty much all day um, in meetings, coordinating um, with other um, executive leaders of the department and also with other city leaders um, for the response activities that we have going on right now, which include um, everything from operating the testing site, the drive-through testing mm -hmm. site that is at um, I-35 uh, at the old Home Depot, um, to um, staffing and operating um, the epidemiology response, which bas basically means um, those staff who are trained in, and work on um, once someone tests positive for a particular disease, and at this point it's COVID, um, they're the ones who look into that and investigate it. and. Um, staffing all of that and all the needs they have. Um, also IT, we're trying to implement IT solutions because our normal processes can't manage the capacity that COVID has brought. So our, mm -hmm. the way we have been doing things 
isn't going to work for the, the volume we have to deal with with COVID. Right. So, um, so we've had to do some as we go changing systems and changing technology in the middle of having to still respond to a response. So it's mm -hmm. it's very um, it's very challenging. Um, the staff get very tired um, right. because it's a, it's a lot um, on them all at once. And and um, most staff in the department are not doing what they normally do. They're not doing their day job. We call it. Um, they're either out at the point of testing site and helping there, or they're um, working teleworking and helping um, epidemiology with um, interviews uh, of people who have tested positive. Um, or we're trying to coordinate whatever resource needs the, that we need to put out there to, to make um, the response to the disease happen. Yeah, so it sounds like your responsibilities kind of change depending on what um, the public needs for their health needs, right? And it, you just are setting up or coordinating all of those necessary processes that are gonna help the public. Yes, so what, what my staff in my division do touches just about everything else we do. And I guess, um, let me give you an idea of some of the things that the public health department does that may help um, because it's pretty diverse. It's a lot of different things that a lot of people don't yeah, think about. Right. Um, public health is like air. You don't realize you need it until you don't have it and or something goes wrong and <laughs> like a pandemic. Right. Um, so um, we do the traditional things that people would normally think of in public health. We have clinics that we do for STDs or um, sexually transmitted diseases and tuberculosis. We have um, immunizations clinics where children can go and get their immunizations that they need for school or, or um, any other immunizations they need. We have, um, we have staff that work on what we call the basic needs. Um, so we have staff that work in our neighborhood centers that work with their social workers or nurses um, that work with the public, um, folks who may need some help with food insecurity, some folks who may need financial assistance with like making their rent or their utility payments. Um, we also do job counseling for folks who maybe have lost a job and need to kind of retrain for something new, something different. Um, we do a lot of outreach with community uh, with communities to talk about um, health screening and healthy living practices mm -hmm. like blood pressure screening and um, blood sugar screening. Right. Um, we do um, a lot of outreach around HIV and mm -hmm. HIV prevention. Um, and then we have restaurant inspections. So we also have a whole division that that's their job is to inspect yeah. all the restaurants and make sure they're safe. Um, and also all the festivals that Austin has. So we have oh, wow. a whole set of staff who inspect the food booths that are at all those mm -hmm. festivals, like uh, Austin City Limits or South by Southwest or Circuit of the Americas Racetrack. All of that is done within Austin Public Health. It's, um, it's a lot. And then <laughs> you've got the epidemiologists who do this normally, looking at you know disease people who test positive for diseases and figuring out, you know, where they live and what, you know, what happens, who, who might have been exposed. Um, there are more than 70 reportable conditions that provider doctors are required to report to the local health department. Um, and so on a daily basis, our staff are looking at different diseases um, and, you know, looking at people who have tested positive for various diseases. Um, so COVID is just that, you know, in turbo. Um, right. And all at once. Yeah. Wow. That is a lot. And so you mentioned you had been working for the government since 96. Is that correct? How long yes. have you been working for the city of Austin? Uh, nine and a half years. Oh, okay. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good place to work for. And what level of education or training is needed for your position? I know you had mentioned that you got your bachelor's in government, correct? I did. Um, okay. And I have, I do have a master's. Um, it's not necessarily required to have a master's to do what I do, um, but it does help because that experience is really um, important. I think um, for my position as an executive um, is is a as an oversight position. Um, you know, you just need a lot of really good organization, um, yeah. and those skill sets come with some of that schooling and some of that um, real world experience that you get in internships and 
and different trainings that you get going through a graduate program. Um, so um, did I answer that question? No, <laughs> for sure. Yes. <laughs> yes. Excellent. <laughs> so as you know, I'm in the classroom with a bunch of students who are still uh, they're developing a lot of self-awareness and what kind of um, education they need and skills they need for different types of jobs. So what do you think I should be teaching in my classroom to prepare them for employment um, in public health? I would say, um, you know, we, we talk a lot about soft skills. Right. You know, being over HR, you know, I'm really involved in the recruitment that we do for new staff to fill our, our current, you know, our positions. Um, and um, being, having the ability to um, be self-motivated, right. um, to follow directions. Um, these are all things that are, are, are really important for our positions. Mm -hmm. um, but also, um, you know, public health is um, is a great career path because it's, there's so many different things that you can you can do in public health. Um, what should you be teaching in your classroom? That is such an interesting question. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's a very loaded question because there's so many sections to it that there's a lot of th things that different people do. <laughs> yes. 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 But, but, but I understand. Yeah. Um, I would say active listening, okay. critical thinking is key. Um, there's a training that we give all of our staff called Crucial Conversations, which is talking about having those tough conversations um, in a way that's professional and appropriate, um, even though it's, a, it's either, either tough subjects um, or, or it's something not comfortable, um, something's going wrong and you need to have that crucial conversation with your boss or with your coworkers. Um, that's really key for us. Um, organization is, and, and time management mm -hmm. is really key because there's never enough time in government. Um, having been in government since 1996, there's yeah. never enough hours in the day. There's never enough resources to do everything that you would want to do ideally. Um, it's very different than being in the private sector, uh, working for a for-profit company. Um, the need always is going to outpace the resources you have to address that need. Um, and so you have to be able to prioritize um, and, and think on your feet and, um, and be decisive. Um, but along with being decisive, you have to be able to listen and hear what the people around you are, are telling you and your experts. Um, I always say uh, I'm only as smart as the people around me. Mm. Um, and I always try to surround myself with people who are smarter than I am um, because I don't, there's no way I can know what needs to be done for HR and IT. Those are two completely different things, but right. those are two things that I'm over, I have to manage and oversee. Um, so it's really important to be able to know that and, and to um, bring people around you who are those subject matter experts and, uh, and listen to them when they're talking to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Uh, those soft skills that you bring up, so important. Um, so if I'm in the classroom teaching them, is there, are there any materials or resources that you, that are your go-tos that would help them have a better understanding of what goes into this career? Um, when it, when it comes to government work, um, it's all about relationships mm -hmm. and collaboration. Um, and one thing that I use with my staff that I, I say as early as you can start this awareness and this training is best is um, some kind of a personality assessment mm -hmm. like uh, Myers-Briggs or DISC. Um, there's a million of them out there, so you could pick any, you know, um, but all that does is you answer some questions, each person answers some questions, and then it helps you understand your preferences, mm -hmm. uh, what your go-to function functionality is and it also helps you understand how everybody's different so um, there are people who are processors and have to process information they don't make a snap decision um, and you need those people 
because there's other people who want to just make a decision without the, the necessary information. And so they balance each other out. So it's, it's teaching people how to work within a team with different personality types and different um, skill sets and how to value all of those differences and, and be sure to use all those skill sets to their, um, to their value um, as, as right. part of the team and not, um, not exclude certain things because you know, that's not how everybody thinks, but that's, yes. that's the point. Um, and having that awareness of what your preferences are or and your um, skill sets are and being able to compare those to somebody else and com completely show that as a team, how the team can get there um, is, is really valuable. Um, and so, you know, high school students, I think that'd be fabulous for them to go through that kind of an exercise right. um, and have that understanding of how everybody contributes to the success of the team. Yes, very true. And I know you had touched upon um, how technology is playing such a huge role in this post-COVID world. Uh, what about pre-COVID? How, how does technology play a role in this career? So um, technology is key. Um, of course, everybody now is on computer, right? Um, for for IT, we have been implementing um, a whole lot of new systems um, and taking certain things that were being done manually or on paper to electronically being done. Um, and so being able to break down a process into its individual tasks that gets you through that process, because that's the key to an IT implementation is being able to look at what you're currently doing, break it down by each individual step, um, and then move that into how the electronic solution will improve that process, make it faster, make it easier, whatever your, your goal is. Um, we did that with our electronic health records um, a couple years ago. Uh, so we went from paper charts in our clinics for our patients to now it's all probably like your doctor's office um, on the computer. Yeah. Um, and that's a different, that's a big transition. Um, it also takes a lot of planning um, and working with the folks who do the on the, the work um, to make sure you're fully understanding their um, their job and their the needs they have. Um, but then it's also training and planning to train those folks so that they understand how to use the system and how it's going to help them and 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 then listening to them to know how you can improve the system to make it even better. Um, so it's it still goes back to that collaboration, teamwork, communication. Um, so I, IT is continuous. It's never ending. There's always a new software on the horizon or a new solution um, that can help us do our work better. Um, you have to prioritize those. Cost is always something that's um, something that has to be considered. Um, but that's, um, yeah, and it changes every day. There's more things coming every day, um, pre-COVID, post-COVID especially. And like I said, we're trying to implement a brand new software system yeah. that you can see right now because you can go online and take an assessment and schedule a test at the drive through site on a website. Well, that's our new software that we just put in place in March. Um, so yeah, so it affects everything. Yeah, and, yeah. and you have to be able to do PowerPoint, I mean, the basics. Um, you need to be able to manage in Teams. You need to do PowerPoint. You need to do Excel and, and Word. Everyone needs those basic um, skill sets of those office softwares to be able to manage. Right, um, okay. And navigate through the workplace. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, so are, are your work hours typical, kind of eight to five, Monday through Friday, as as the governmental jobs are, or what do your hours look like? Um, my hours at my level are pretty much um, when they need me. Yeah. <laughs> so my scheduled <laughs> hours, yeah, are, my scheduled <laughs> hours are Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5.30 is my schedule. Um, yeah. The one good thing about government is they do a lot of alternative work schedules. So that's a that's a big benefit of being a government employee. Yeah. Um, the flexibility that you get. Um, but um, for me at my position, um, you know, I'm I'm kind of on call most of the time. People, if, if something goes wrong, if something's happening after hours, I mean, they 
that's my that's part of my job is to be available right. for them to reach out and problem solve. Yeah, um, you're the go-to. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you mentioned one positive aspect being the flexible uh, schedule. What are other positive aspects about your job? Um, so government folks do not do their job because of the money. It's just not their motivation, right? Um, big benefits of being with the government, um, whether that's state government, local government, um, you know, federal government, um, a university is still a government job um, for a public university, um, is, and this is, I know this is harder for um, folks to think through long term, but the benefits, so the health benefits, the retirement benefits um, are far and away um, better than in the private sector. Um, that's a big deal for me. Uh, I have a special needs child, so health benefits are a big deal to me. Um, uh, and for government, most of the time, for, for example, the city of Austin, our benefits are very good and the city bears the cost of a large majority of that that you don't have to pay for it yourself. So that's a big benefit. Um, and the retirement system is a big deal um, in the long term. What I, I would like folks to understand is um, the best job is one that you have um, that you have a passion about. If you're just going to a job to make a widget or push a piece of paper, um, some I guess some people can do that. I could never do that. I, I, I have to have a purpose. Um, and so government work always has a purpose. Um, you're serving the, the citizens of your jurisdiction. You know, we're serving the, the people of Austin um, for public health, where we're serving the most vulnerable folks in Austin. We're serving all of Austin for their general health. Um, we're trying to help folks who are homeless. Um, we're trying to work with folks who need assistance um, with either food or, or, or uh, financial assistance um, or people who have certain diseases that need help to manage those diseases, um, diabetes or heart disease. Um, all of our nurses, our staff, they all do this because they are passionate about what they do and they care about um, the people of Austin and, and them doing as well as they possibly can. Um, so that, I mean, to me, for me, government is a purpose because it's, it's working for something bigger, um, than a profit, but that's just my personal. No, that's great. And that kind of, uh, you're starting to talk about some of the advice that you would give to some students. So what I hear is that find your passion as yeah. well as develop those soft skills. Do you have any other advice that you'd like to give students if they are interested in a career similar to yours? Uh, never stop learning. I mean, I know my son just graduated and he's all excited because he thinks it's over. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> <Just> the beginning. <laughs> well, congratulations on that, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. It's awesome. Thank you. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you never can stop learning. The minute you stop learning is probably when you need to be done. Right. Um, and retire. Um, because I continuously learn, um, continuously learn new things, learn from my staff. Um, go to conferences and learn, try to improve my knowledge of current events and whatnot. It, it's just critical that you're always um, learning it and being open to new ideas and new ways of doing yes. things. Yeah, excellent. And that ties into um, how if you're motivated for school, you're going to be motivated for work usually. How do you feel teachers should teach that relevance um, to students, uh, that relevance that... Um, mm -hmm you know, to strengthen the relevance of school to the workplace? Right. Um, hmm, that's a great question. I think, I think it would be, it would be ideal to help students make the connection between mm -hmm. what they're learning in the classroom and how they're going to use that in the workforce. Um, or and or what they're learning in the classroom going to be lead them to what they want to do in the workforce. Um, and I know as far as high school offers way more than when I went to high school of really cool yeah. <laughs> stuff that you can do in high school. I never had that. Uh, <laughs> um, and so it's 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 
I think easier now for students to see that connection because they can do some of those topic specifics if they if they you know care about um, you know I know our where my son went to school they had a veterinarian um, preparation course path that you could take and um, you know all kinds of different things um, I d so I think making that connection I know that's really hard to do at times um, but exposing them to some some of the workforce um, things um, you know for government exposing them to the way government works um, I know when I was in junior high we took a, a field trip this is what started me on government we took a field trip to the city council at, in the little town I lived in and we um, watched them deliberate over several issues and and we knew ahead of time what they were going to be talking about and from their agenda and then we talked about it afterwards and talked through what we saw of how they talked about different things and and the citizens coming to talk to them who have different opinions of what how things should go that started my passion for government and my love of the government process um some things similar to that um would be great just to be able to expose them um to that those different um environments and that those different topic areas that are happening in the workforce that could then translate into their career yeah, yeah good advice um so we just have a former question on how if you would be willing to participate in things such as is at academy excuse me academic advisory board sure. would you be willing to participate okay awesome Absolutely. and how about uh things such as speaking to my class would that be something you'd be interested in absolutely okay sure. wonderful and would you be willing to allow a student to job shadow that's always yes. a great opportunity right yes and originally <laughs> that's what this was supposed to be <laughs> right <laughs> so i hate that we had to undo that because i was really excited about that but yeah. but yes absolutely i think that would be great yeah awesome and the last question is is would you be willing to mentor a student yes okay great well that was awesome that that did it for our questions Okay, great. It's all I great advice. You all yes, questions. thank you. Yeah. Yay. Kimberly, that was so awesome. And thank you so much, Elena, too. I, I always feel like I learn so much more about the city every time I do these interviews <laughs> because y'all do so much. Obviously, there's so many little intricate pieces of the city that nobody thinks about. And I love oh. that you were talking about your son who just graduated because when I graduated, I thought the same thing. I was like, <laughs> I'm done with school. I'm never going to learn again. And then you know, if you go to college, you go and you're like, oh, this is a yeah. lot different. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I have to write another paper again. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's called a memo, but you're still going to write one. Yeah, right. I'm like, I'm never going to need a textbook. And then they're like $400 and you're like, OK. Right. So. No, my daughter's seven now. And when she was in kindergarten, her second day, she asked, how much longer do I have to do this? <laughs> I was like, well. Like, rest of your life really yeah right <laughs> no but i love that thank you so much both for spending time out of your day to interview each other and get interviewed and i'm so thankful and i can't wait to share this with classmates and with just students in general so thank y'all yes, so much exciting. and thank you all for thank watching. you so much we really yes, appreciate it bye-bye everybody bye-bye bye janet